Okay, I'm going to walk you through the portal front SharePoint slider that is designed, uh, really, it was designed from the ground up to be uh, a solid solution uh, to display news um, and uh, rotate the news in a very elegant manner. Um, and that is easy for users to populate content into and for readers to consume content and can integrate pretty much anywhere on the site. It can integrate with any list um, and uh, is very presentable at the same time. This is a work of, um, uh, you know, a lot of effort that uh, was compiled and put together to make sure the solution works. Um, and a lot of the benefits of it is that it auto adjusts to uh, any images that you upload, it formats them properly, and as you can see, scrolls through things pretty well, and uh, does not have any uh, content overlap or text overlap or anything like that. So let's take a look at it real quick and see, uh, uh, take a quick tour of this as an evaluation to see if this is something that uh, you would like, or if you have any feedback, we're more than well happy to hear what kind of feedback you have to provide or any features that you'd like to add. So we have uh, obviously mocked up a template around the um, the slider. So the really the slider begins from here down to here. Okay. Obviously there's some empty space here because there are uh, items that could be fitting here or uh, news headers uh, just like those thumbs. We call them thumbs that could be fitted in here as well if there are uh, more news items to display. Now the first thing you'll notice is obviously the slider is um, sliding content and as the slider moves from one uh, item to the other uh, notice the black highlighted uh, um, border uh, for that thumb meaning that this is that's where it is right now and it will automatically shift to the other uh, thumb uh, automatically as you can see here. And obviously as a user you're able to um, uh, click on whichever thumb that you want. So let's say I want to go to timesheet, uh, sales forecast, you know, it slides to the item that you have picked. Um, and you can see also the small image, right? Uh, let's uh, click on this one. Uh, let's say uh, you'll notice here that there's a small image um, and then, then there's also a larger image. Now all this was done automatically uh, even though the size of the image that was uploaded was uh, potentially significantly bigger. So now let's see how this works. So let's say I click on an item. I have the option here of reading more or I can see all the news item in the archives. So let's go ahead and click on read more. And here is the article page. Now the nice thing about this article page is that it's a full-blown uh, page. Uh, and if you do use the announcement web part in SharePoint, it's going to show you a very, uh, <laughs> not a very professional page that shows you the list with the content inside of it. This one is a full-blown page. And as you can see here, uh, the content is here. Now obviously there's a content section because this is a blog site. Um, and if you do not want the content or comment section or any of those icons, uh, those are also removable. Okay. Let us now see how adding content to or news, whoever's posting news, let's see how that process happens. Uh, so on the site itself, the news site, um, we're going to click on create a post or a news item. And then there's a form that we fill out. The form starts off with the uh, title. And we're just going to grab the title from here. I have it on the side. I'm just going to paste it. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that dot. The body, we're going to go ahead and grab the uh, some body just to put in here. Okay. As a sample. And uh, obviously this is a rich text body. So you can format, bold, anything that is needed here. You can even insert... Uh, any specific image that is needed. Now let's go ahead in this case and insert an image into the body itself. OK. 
okay and we are just going to go ahead and pick uh, this image of this building and hit open and it's asking us which uh, folder to uh, document library to save it into and we're just going to put it somewhere in this document library which is fine okay and here it is loading it into SharePoint we're going to go ahead and save the picture and there we go so now uh, as you can see here the size of the picture is pretty uh, big um, now a lot of times you know users don't want to be resizing pictures um, outside of the application uh, or cropping them just because you know it, it's time consuming and it's it could be some technical work so a lot of times uh, this is a great tool to size them up here uh, and you can always um, resize them to the size that you think is appropriate okay and then uh, we would like the text for example to wrap around here so we're going to click on the image design and then positioning we're going to make it left and right would look like this so we're going to make it left and moving down here so we got the body all ready there's an extra space here we're just going to get rid of that and we're going to scroll down to the other sections this is some categories that you can specify which category category it belongs to as far as a news item the publish date is the date that you would like the item to be published on the home page so on that date the uh, SharePoint slider will automatically publish the item on that date without any um, without any interference or uh, any, any action needed from the user. Uh, the summary section is a brief summary. This is what will appear in the slider on the home page. Uh, this could be a brief text, a couple of lines of text, uh, obviously nothing too big. So here in this case we're just going to paste you know a little blurb about what this is all about okay just a teaser and you know if this if you want to take this from the first two sentences that's fine a lot of times it's not the first two sentences maybe it's just a quick synopsis of what uh, this item is about and then this is um, an important section here this is uh, showing you uh, asking you for the image now, a lot of the other solutions ask you to type in a URL for an image. Here, this is a much more uh, friendly solution. You can go ahead and insert an image that makes sense for you. So, in this case, we're going to browse for the same image, but it doesn't really have to be the same image. Um, hit open, and then we're going to save it in the same location as well. We're going to go ahead and save it. And then here we go. Here we got the image uh, once again. Now, the user uploading this doesn't even need to resize this at this point. Um, I may resize it here just for the sake of um, uh, shrinking it just to see what's going on. But uh, we're going to go ahead and just keep this image in here. And then under expires, this is the expiration date on which I would like this item to be removed from the home page. So I'm going to pick some date in the future. Let's pick something in, uh, let's make it 2015. And um, here we have two options. We can either save as a draft where we can review the item and how it's going to look before anybody else sees it. Or we can go ahead and publish it and just make it uh, uh, basically schedule it for that day to show up. We're going to go ahead and publish it in this case. Okay. And we are going now to go to the home page where the slider sits. And now we see that uh, the image got resized, right? Obviously the image was a much longer image, so it did some cropping process which was needed. To, uh, to fit it in. Um, it also did some resizing. Um, it also put everything properly in the right location. And, you know, as you can see here, 
it's a very presentable format. At the same time, it made a smaller version of the image for the thumb as well. And as you can see here, we can obviously still go between uh, thumbs. Okay, and here's the read me, read, or read more to get more information about that item. That's all I got for you today. Um, love to hear your feedback and let us know uh, what you think and any other features that you'd like to add to this to make it uh, an even more robust solution.